starring Francho Tone in Men in White on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. DuPont brings you Men in White by Sidney Kingsley, a radio adaptation of the Pulitzer Prize-winning drama of a brilliant young intern in modern medicine, one of the army of students, nurses, and doctors who dedicate their lives to the relief of human suffering and the preservation of human life. On the Cavalcade of America, Men in White, starring Francho Tone. The place, the staff lounge of a great metropolitan hospital. Pete, sweetheart, lend me your white tux vest for tonight, will you? I've got a date. The answer is no. Is there a drink in my room? I told you the answer. Well, I guess you can have the vest. Oh, thanks, old man. Hey, you'll find a nice cold bottle of ginger ale on my dress. Ginger ale? Why, you stinker. Hey, come back here, you bum. You can't have the vest, yeah, you hear me? Yeah, yeah. What's going on here, Dr. Bradley? That bum, that stinker. Oh, Dr. Hawksburg. Uh, sorry. Uh, you see, Shorty and I... Shorty? Uh, Dr. Otis. Oh, I see. When I was an intern, we called each other doctor. But I don't think it had any appreciable effect on our work. Oh, thanks, Dr. Hawksburg. Say, have you seen George Ferguson about something I wanted to ask him? I thought I'd find him... Oh... Here he comes now. Hello, Dr. Hartford. Hello, Pete. Hi, George. Wanted to see me, Dr. Hartford? Oh, mine can wait. Uh, Dr. Bradley had something. Oh, yes, George. That little girl in 218 is coming out of the ether nicely, but I was worried about that insulin before the operation. Why? How much did you give her? Forty units. Well, twenty would have been enough. I know. Dr. Cunningham ordered it. Cunningham? That's... Well, you should have told me before you gave it to her. I'm not going to have patients going into shock on the operating table, cunning him or no cunning him, you understand? Okay, okay. I'm going up now and have a look at 401. Will you come along, Dr. Bradley? Oh, thanks, doctor. Say, I was interested in what you were saying about... Dr. Ferguson. Yes, nurse? There's a Miss Hudson waiting to see you. Oh, send her in, will you? Yes, sir. You can go in, Miss Hudson. Thank you. George, darling, wherever have you been? I'm sorry, Laura, I couldn't help it. Emergency operation, accident case. Let me look at you, George. Your eyes are tired. I didn't have much sleep last night. It was a pretty sick house. You're overworked, and I don't like it one bit. <laughs> you know, I don't seem to get a kick out of life anymore unless you're around. <sighs> and that's not very often, is it? Darling, we'll make up for it all. Later on. Honestly. I don't know if we can, George. Last night, for instance, it, it's gone now. You see, dearest, the way I feel if I had you every minute from now on... It wouldn't be enough. I feel that way too, darling. I wish I'd lived all my life with you. I wish I'd been born in the same room with you and played in the same street. Oh, I'm glad you missed them. They were ordinary and gloomy. They might have touched you. Changed you. Touch me now, George. Change me. Tell me what it's all about. Listen, dear. About seven months ago, there was a boy here who'd been blind from birth. We operated... Successfully. Then one night, I showed him the star for the first time. He looked at them a moment and began to cry like a baby because he said they were so wonderful. And he might never have seen them. When I look at you, Laura, I get something of that feeling. I... I can't tell you how large a part of me you become, Laura. You're... Dr. Ferguson. Oh, Dr. blast Ferguson. it. Someday I'm going to... Don't move. It's no Dr. use. Oh, it's my call. Off my knee. No, Come no. Come on, Dr. on your feet, Ferguson. young lady. Oh, you've spoiled it. Dr. Dr. Ferguson speaking. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, doctor, I'll be ready. Well, I'll tend to all that. All right. Laura. All right, go. Go to work. Laura, dear, I... We are going to make up for last night. I want to go to that cute little place where the food and music were so good, remember? Then a long drive up the Hudson Laura, and... Laura, I've got some bad news. You won't be upset, will you? 
What? I can't make it tonight. I've got to stay in. Not again, George. A fractured skull. I can't possibly get out of it. I- I'll wait. Better not. No telling what time it may be. Oh, I was planning so much on tonight. But it's not just tonight I'm thinking of. It's all the nights after we're married. We can't go on this way then, never seeing one another except between operations. Well, what do you expect me to do? Look, I want to be with you, but I can't, that's all. I can't. I understand, darling. But later on, we're going to arrange our lives like human beings. You can open up an office and have regular hours, specialize. If I go on with this research job with Hochberg, darling, I won't be able to go into practice. Not for a long time. You know, I've known hockey since I was a little girl. I'm beginning to hate him. He's a slave driver. He's a great doctor, Laura. I'm lucky to be working with him. Maybe so. But I couldn't go on this way, George. I just couldn't. I'd rather break off now and try to forget you. You don't know what you're saying, Laura. I mean it. It would kill me, but I'd rather die quickly than by slow torture. Dr. I Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson. Uh, They're calling you, George. I know. Dr. Ferguson. Yes, operator. Dr. Ferguson speaking. Yeah. Who? Soft 218. We'll call Dr. Cunningham at this case. I know, but... What's the temperature? Pulse? She asked for food before she went unconscious? No. No more insulin. Absolutely not. I'll be right down. I have to go now, Laura. And please, don't worry. Things will straighten themselves out. No, they won't. Laura. I'll see you tomorrow night. You're right. Yes. Think it over, George. We'll have to come to some decision. Dr. Ferguson. Oh, Laura, will you please? I mean it. Dr. Absolutely. All right. Dr. Ferguson. All right, Laura. A nurse, what's happened then? Complete collapse, Dr. Cunningham. Just a few minutes ago. Oh, I see the chart, please. Here, Doctor. Mm, thank you, thank you. Doctor, the pulse is barely. Oh, that's late. Hmm. May I have my stethoscope, please? <coughs> hmm. Ah, uh-huh, yes. Diabetic coma, just as I suspected. The insulin nurse at once. Forty units of fifty grams of glucose. But Dr. Ferguson thought that insulin. Ferguson? This is my responsibility. Forty units, quickly. Yes, Doctor. And please hurry that. Is she any better, nurse? Oh, Dr. Cunningham. Evening, Dr. Ferguson. Insulin, please, nurse. Dr. Cunningham, you'll pardon me, I hope, but isn't insulin contraindicated here? Contraindicated? It's our last chance, man. Doctor, I mean no offense, but I know this case history, and it looks to me like diabetic shock, not coma. It's out of the question, my dear fellow. Well, but the whole clinical picture's so clear. And look at the patient. Pale, cold... Temperature subnormal, complaint of hunger, sudden onset. Suppose you let me handle my own case, young man. Nurse, prepare that on. Dr. Cunningham, please. Call in Dr. Hochberg. He's in the house now. Ask him. There's no time. Take your hand off that hypo. But you'll kill this little girl. I will not book this interference. I'll have you brought before the medical board. Do, by all means. But you're not going to inject that insulin. Because there it goes on the floor. Very well, sir. But if that girl dies... You killed her. Nurse, put the bed in shock position. Yes, Doctor. Glucose solution, quick. 30 cc syringe. Yes, sir, right away. Oh, never mind. Too late for that. Adrenaline. Yes, Doctor. Hurry, please. Here's the hypo, Doctor. Good. Swab that arm, will you? Ready, Doctor. Now, then. Now, then, we'll see. When do you go off duty, nurse? In half an hour. Why? I wish you'd stay on a little longer and watch the patient with me. Hope you didn't have anything more important on for tonight. Doctor, the most important thing in life to me right now is to keep this little girl alive. Well, let me look at you. What's your name, nurse? Denham. Barbara Denham. I... I like the way you stood up against Dr. Cunningham just now, sir. Thanks, Barbara. Supposing you're wrong. Or even if you're right, if she dies, you... I know. Oh, 
Oh, she... She's so still. Nothing we can do now but wait. Well, I'd better clean up this mess. Why, you're... You're trembling, Barbara. This is my first case with a sick child. I got to like her an awful lot. I guess... Yes, I'm not a very good nurse. You're going to be a swell nurse. Doctor John. Doctor She's coming to you. Doctor God, she is. How do you feel, baby? I feel dizzy like. What happened? Nothing. You just fell asleep, that's all. Close your eyes, honey, and sleep some more. Bring the bed down, Barbara. Well, what's the matter? Why, Barbara? Barbara, don't. I'm sorry for that. I just can't help it. Then don't try to help it. Go ahead. Go ahead and cry. Listening to Francho Tone in Men in White, presented on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As our play continues, several months have passed. Dr. Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson. That thing's been Dr. saying Ferguson. the same thing all day. Dr. Dr. Ferguson. I do not like him to stay away from the house so long. I wonder where he is. Haven't you heard, Denon? Wedding rehearsal. Funny. I never thought of him as being engaged. And surely you've met the rich and beautiful Laura Hudson. Oh, well, of course I knew they were friends. I've seen her about. Isn't her father the new head of the hospital board of trustees? Why else is Dr. Ferguson suddenly so important around here? It's not true. He loved Laura Hudson. He told me so. It never works out, you know, doctors and nurses. Come on and confess, Denon. You had a crush on Ferguson, didn't you? No. Oh, and I think you're terrible, all of you. I wish I'd never come to work in a hospital. Now, honey, come off it. We didn't know it was that serious. We didn't mean anything, Denon. I know. Just me, I guess. You better get some sleep if you ask me. You've been looking like death on wheels lately. What is it? I don't know. It's... I keep feeling a funny pain. Oh, I guess it's nothing, really. I'm just nervous. In the old days, when the hero married the other girl, the heroine got brain fever and told all while in a delirium. So I'd watch my health if I were you, Denon. What do you mean by that? Nothing. Just that. <laughs> Dr. Tell them to stop that thing, nurse. Yes, Doctor. I'll take care of whatever it is as soon as I get my street clothes off. Yes, Doctor. Oh, oh, here comes Hawkbird, Laura. As mad as a hatter. Brace yourself. <laughs> you can't frighten me. Good afternoon, Laura. Hello, Hockey. George, this is not like you staying out like this, neglecting your work. Well... I'll oh, have a heart, Hockey. It was our wedding rehearsal. Well, I'll forgive you this time. But no more wedding rehearsals, understand? I hope not. <laughs> George... I heard something this morning. I didn't know quite what to make of it. You still want to accomplish something in medicine? Oh, certainly. You mean that? I do. You love George, don't you, Laura? Well, you know I do. Of course you do. You want to help him. But that's not the way, Laura. Believe me, nobody can help George but himself. Not your father, Laura, nor anyone else. Nothing can help him but hard work. He cannot buy this. He must earn it. That staff appointment they talked to you about, George. You're not ready for it. But it's not as if I'm going to drop my studies. I intend to keep on. Of course, Hockey. My dear child. After all, George has worked so terribly hard till now. If it's going to make things easier... There are no easy roads in medicine. But I'm counting on work, Doctor. Hard work. Hard work, yes. Ten years of grueling, grinding work. Then you'll be ready to take your place in medicine. Not before. Ten years? You're asking me to give up the man I love for ten years? I'm sorry, Laura. It's George's life and yours. You have a right to decide for yourself. 
Oh, by the way, George, you'd better hurry. We're going to operate shortly. New case just came in on the surgical service. One of our own nurses. What's her name? That nice little girl up in pediatrics. Oh, yes, uh, Denon, Barbara Denon. Remember pediatrics? Oh, yes, I remember. Poor child, sepsis. Oh, that's awful. Is she bad? Mm, temperature 105, blood count way up. Well, we'll see what we can do. Meet me up there. Well, Laura. See you tomorrow morning, darling. I have some shopping to do. See you then. Yes, George. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, young lady. Oh, now, Huck. I know. It was terribly important. Rehearsal, your wedding. But do you realize upstairs there's a girl lying unconscious? There will be no wedding for her if she develops a blood clot. Don't you realize what George's work means? Of course I do, Hockey. No. No, you don't. Would you like to see, perhaps? <laughs> yes. Why not? Dr. N. Uh, yes, Dr. Lockhart. Take Miss Hudson here upstairs. See that she gets a cap and gown and have her in the operating room in about 20 minutes. <laughs> gown seems awfully wrinkled. <laughs> They're never pressed. That would unsterilize them. Oh, my first operation. You're not nervous, are you? Why, no. No, of course not. That's more than I can say. First operation I watched, I fainted. Dead away. Mask, nurse, mask. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, hello, Laura. Hello, Hockey. George. Laura. What, what are you doing here? Surprise. It was Hockey's idea, trying to impress me with your work. Mm-hmm. Stand over here in the corner. Don't come near us. We're getting clean. We're full of contamination. Oh, am I? Well, how do you feel, Laura? Great. Mm-hmm. Basin, nurse. How, how do I look? Very becoming. Think so, George? Huh? Yes, very. You can look around, but keep out of the way. Don't touch anything. Put your hands behind your back. All right, nurse. The gown. Yes, doctor. <laughs> And gloves. Ready, Dr. Ferguson? Yes, Doctor. Orderly. Orderly. Yes, sir. Bring the patient in. How is she, Doctor? George. Yeah? What are they going to do to me? There's nothing to be afraid of, Barbara. You won't let them hurt me. No, of course not. Will you be there? George, darling. Darling, please be there. I'll be there. Thank you. All right, take yeah. on in. Wait. Just a moment. George, don't worry. I love you. I don't care. Come on, come on, come on. We're wasting time here. George. Yes, Laura. What was that all about? Laura, I'm sorry. I should have said something. I didn't know. George, who is that girl? Now stand away, Laura. Who is Look, you mustn't touch me. Laura, you've unsterilized my gown. Nurse. Nurse. Yes, Doctor. Sterile gown, gloves. Laura, you must be more careful. You know, Germ. George, why did that girl say she loved you? Dr. Ferguson, the patient is draped and ready. All right, I'm coming. George, if you want to watch, Miss, you'd better go over there. I'll get a stool for you. Matt? No. No, don't bother. I've had enough. I've had enough. Here, you get busy. You. Well, what's the matter? You look... You feel ill? Take her out in your window. Give her some more. No. No, I'm... I'm fine. I can walk out of here all by myself. What's the matter with her? First operation. What else? She's got a long way to go yet. Shh, shh, shh. Please. Ready, Dr. Wayne? All set. Ready, Dr. Ferguson. Ready. Slam City. Scalpel. Come in. It's me, George. Oh. Stenon's temperature's down this morning. I know. Nurse tells me you watched the case all night. That's very nice. Well, excellent book, yes. You should read all of Cushing's reports. I told myself I was going to once. George, you must pull yourself together. 
Why don't you call Laura? You can explain to her. There's nothing to explain. What are you going to do? I don't know. I don't know. I've got to think this thing through. All right, George. Call me if I can help in any way. Thanks. George. Oh, it's you, Laura. I had to come back, George. I had to talk to you. Get things straight. Do you love that girl, George? No. Then what? She was lonely, Laura. I tried to help her. Don't you understand? Oh, well, why talk about it? What are you going to do about it? I'm going to marry her, if she'll have me. But why? She'll never be able to work in a hospital again. Someone's got to help her find a new life for herself. Why does that have to be you? You heard what she said. She said she loved you. Well... Come in. George, I thought I... Oh, hello, Laura. Hello, Hockey. George, Miss Denon just died. What? Nothing you can do, George. Embolism, when it collapsed, died instantly. She shouldn't have died. Don't, George, don't torture yourself, darling. It might have happened to anybody. I tried everything. Heart stimulants, adrenaline, all useless. Little blood clot in the brain, and we're helpless. Forty years I've spent in medicine. And I couldn't help her. Oh, what's the use? What good is it all? Why go on? Medicine takes everything from you. And when you need it most, it leaves you helpless. We don't know anything. We're just guessing. We've been doing a little work on embolism, getting some results. Slow, George, slow. Knowledge is slow. 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 We'll all be dead before it gets here. There isn't a man in medicine who hasn't said what you said. And meant it for a minute. You're right, George. We are groping in the dark. But our answers today are closer than they were 20 years ago. And 20 years from now, they'll be still closer. That's what we're here for. But in the end, our reward is something richer than simply living. Maybe it's a kind of success that world out there can't measure. Maybe it's a kind of Glory, George. Yes, question as much as we will. When the test comes, we know, don't we, George? Yes. Well, we'll reduce that fracture as soon as you're ready. Schedule the appendix at 10. Gastric ultra immediately after. Yes, Doctor. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. George, let's get away from here. Let's go someplace where we can talk this thing over quietly and safe. We are operating this morning, Laura. Oh, George, I know, no, but... Laura, this is where I belong. Yes. Yes, I, I guess you're right. You see? I understand. Well, Hockey will let you off for a night. Give me a ring. I'll be around. Maybe someday we'll get together anyway. Dr. Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson. They're calling you. Yes. Dr. Ferguson. Work hard. So long. Dr. Ferguson. Laura. Yes, operator. Dr. Ferguson speaking. <clears throat> Who? We'll put her on. Oh, Mrs. Dandria. Sure, your boy's all right. Yes. No, no, you mustn't cry, Mother. You mustn't. He's all right. We'll take care of him. No, don't cry, Mother. Don't cry. Yes, he's going to live. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, starring Francho Tone in Men in White. Tonight, there is but one thought in the mind of every American. Victory. The victory we mean to have. That victory will depend in some measure, perhaps in large measure, upon America's technical skill. Upon the kind of expert knowledge we have spoken of so often on The Cavalcade as know-how. We'd like to tell you tonight of a DuPont contribution to industry, which, modest as it may be in itself, is a typical and striking example of this expert know-how. Not many people know it, but the X-ray is as valuable today in industrial production as it is in medicine. 
Many manufacturers X-ray virtually all of the castings they buy, using X-ray equipment in some instances, operating at voltages as high as a million volts. Used with such equipment, the latest DuPont X-ray film is so fast that a camera today can peer through four inches of solid steel in two minutes' time. X-rays disclose hidden defects in welds and castings. Practically all parts of an airplane that might fail and give way in flight, not only the motor parts, but structural parts as well, are examined under X-rays. Gigantic metal accessories like the pen stocks of the Grand Coulee Dam are X-rayed on the spot by portable machines to check the welding of the steel seams. X-ray scrutiny of welded seams is of extraordinary value, too, in high-pressure retorts and pipes in industry. The cracking of petroleum to make gasoline, for instance, is carried out at enormously high pressures. The retorts in which the cracking process goes on are made by rolling steel plates from two to six inches thick into cylinders and welding the seams. These seams are examined for interior faults with X-rays. In medicine, the perfect X-ray film shows the rentgenologist a wealth of detail and makes possible an accurate diagnosis. In industry, the metallurgist or inspector with perfect X-ray film can detect flaws which might lead to disastrous results. X-ray film is an outstanding example of the exact skill placed by science at the disposal of American industry. Improving DuPont X-ray film is also an example of the work DuPont chemist is doing today in order that we may continue to serve a world of our own making with better things for better living through chemistry. And now some news about next week's cavalcade. Our star is the famous radio and screen personality, Orson Welles. Our play is a radio version of the RKO comedy drama, The Great Man Votes. America has answered the treacherous attack of the Japanese by declaring war to the victorious end. It is going to cost billions and billions of dollars to guarantee victory for our democracy. Buy United States defense bonds and stamps, as many as you can. Get them at your bank, post office, or savings and loan association. Don't forget, next week, Cavalcade presents Orson Welles in the exciting comedy drama, The Great Man Vote. On tonight's program, the orchestra and the original musical score were under the direction of Don Bury. On the Cavalcade of America, your announcer is Clayton Collier, sending best wishes from Dubai. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.